And welcome back, ladies and gents, to another episode of the Not Safe for Work MMA show, of course, residing on the Loudmouth MMA Podcast Network. I am Kyle Steele. I am your host. But this wouldn't be the Not Safe for Work MMA show without the man sitting kind of beside me, kind of behind me, just the way I'm facing. It is Mr. Frederick Kirby. Hello, Fred. Young man. Mr. Kyle. Sir, how are you feeling? Bro, I am fantastic. Good, good, good. I, I know your fantastic. back's kind of bothering you, but, you know. No, my back's fucked, but other than that, <laughs> I'm good. I can barely fucking move, but other than that, I'm fucking great. I uh, I started a new Twitter account last night. Oh, did you? I did. Did so, you follow me? I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. Oh, okay. do, do you remember my uh, Do you remember my old my Donald Trump account? I do not. You remember me telling you about that? I, I th- so, I, so I had a Donald that. Trump account, which was an exact replica of Donald Trump's page. Oh, yeah, I do remember that. Except yes, it, yes, was, yes. Okay, it was yeah. Donald Tump, and I, I, I replaced the R with an E. You, you pulled like, the... Uh, like you're mistyping. Wasn't the little shitbird on the MMA Twitter doing that with Ari Hawani? He's got one of those accounts, and then all the dicks run with it. He's like, ah, oh, Conor so, McGregor's fighting fucking whoever the fuck. So all that I did, I didn't do anything like that. So what I did was, I it was Donald Tump, and I, and I took all of Donald Trump's tweets... And I removed all the R's and replaced them with E's. Oh, that's and cool. then it was Donald Tump. That's, that was it. It's literally the whole gimmick. And then I would get messages all the time. And anytime I got a message, I would just respond with send nudes. And that's all I would ever say. And, Did anybody uh, ever send any nudes? Nobody ever sent nudes. Oh, nobody ever sent nudes. That's a bit of a bummer. Uh, but it was crazy. The, the messages. Out, and some of it would be kind of sad. And I'd be like, oh, no, I really shouldn't be doing <laughs> this. Like people like pleading to me as if I'm the president. I'm like, oh, this is really sad. But the page like blew up. And then eventually I got, I got, the, I got the hammer. I got banned. Ah, I got yeah, banned. So I, I, hadn't, I, didn't, I hadn't had another like kind of parody account for a while. And then last night I was sitting around. I was like, I want to do another parody Twitter account. And I was like, what do I want to do? So I was like, okay. I'm just gonna I'm gonna create a Twitter account called Not Winston Churchill, and then just every day I'm gonna post a picture of someone with the comment, "This is not Winston Churchill," and that's it. That's the whole fucking. Gimmick. That's the whole thing. <laughs> it's already starting to. I, I got retweeted uh, by uh, Forrest Whitaker. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I have no idea what's happening or what we're talking about, but I tell you one thing: I'm glad you didn't follow me on this fucking account. I won't be following you. And I'm fucking blocking you if I find you. That's not the, Forrest Whitaker. Not Stephen. Who no, the fuck? Not who? Not Winston Churchill. Who the fuck cares about Winston Churchill? Nobody. But I'm just telling people that that's not who this picture is. Holy fuck! You're one of those guys <laughs> with a very unironic "Who gives a fuck" Twitter account. Not Winston Churchill. No shit. Forrest Whitaker retweeted. That sounds about right. That one good eye he's got fucking apparently isn't working no more. My God, it's awful. Yeah, for fuck's sake. I don't sakes. know why I'm doing it, but uh, but I love it, so I'm gonna keep doing it. All right, well, <laughs> that's well, all I know. Teach their own. I'm gonna do like three a day. Well, I literally had to sit down today and, and schedule posts of like <laughs> of like uh, Mia Hamm, uh, like Shakira. Uh, Justin Bieber, <laughs> just with the pictures and with just saying this is not. Winston Churchill. <laughs> that was, hand. That's all that I did. That's not bad. All right, Congratulations on that. Thank you, sir. Uh, <laughs> come, and, come and do a Twitter near you. <laughs> um, what else I got? I don't. I think that's pretty much it. That's, all, that, that, that's all that's, that's going that's on. That's all we got to get him wet with. <laughs> that's all. Now we just got to dive right into the face punching, huh? Um, we obviously had a good main event. and uh, Good coat, too. And a good coat. Very good coming as well. Um other than that, it was a pretty lackluster card for the most part. There was there was good fights, but it just like last week's card was just phenomenal. Yeah, yeah it was yeah. great on paper, great in execution. This one was, I think, decent on paper and then kind of decent in execution. There's a few talking you know? points, but I got you. Yeah, yeah. Um, listen, can, can we can we get right to the fucking meat? Well, potatoes? Absolutely, because there's there's, of... there's other stuff I want to talk about as well. So okay, l- l- meat and potatoes. You, go ahead. Okay. Well, I, I don't know what you uh, are thinking by meat and potatoes, but I'm gonna tell you what I'm thinking. Is Diego Sanchez? Oh, boy. can we talk about Diego for a moment here? He looked. First of all, you know how you can tell. You can tell when someone doesn't belong in a fight when the uh, commentators are getting excited about nothing when they're going like, "Oh, look, he landed a kick." <laughs> you know what I mean? He's actually fighting back. Like, oh, okay. Look at that. He uh, he shrugged him off there. You know, they're getting they're they're doing that like kind of condescending like, "Okay, all right. Well, I guess do, he's." Do you know who was cornering Diego Sanchez? Last Stephen night? Bonner. Okay. No, Did you good. hear his advice? Very good. Oh, yeah, oh, I I heard his shining advice. But do you know how? 
and, and, and why, why and how Stefan Bonner ended up being I, I his don't, quarterback. I don't know necessarily why and how. I just know that they were training together, which is bizarre in and of itself. Well, they, they were training together. And then they went to a mountainside hill or a hill of some sort out there in fucking Albuquerque or wherever the fuck Diego trains at. And they smoked a joint. Now, I obviously have no fucking quorum with that. Sure. Problem is, the joint was laced with DMT. For all you Joe Rogan fans out there, you understand, that takes you to the center of the universe and fucks your brain skulls out. Yep. After that, they decided it'd be a good idea for Stefan Bonner to be his corner man for this fight. <laughs> so, you know, and I don't and know what loses the, 30, 26. I don't know what the <laughs> fuck is going on over there, but like Diego, all all joking aside, Diego needs to not fight no more. Like a, a lot of these guys, we come on here and it's like, yeah, I'd like to see him in Bellator, bare knuckle fighting. I don't think Diego Sanchez should be fighting anymore. No. He doesn't sound great in interviews. He looks like shit in the cage. Again, he is so flabby. I was wild. This, this is, this is the, the, the show where we come to joke and have some fun and talk some shit. But on a more serious note, he has look, he looked terrible physically. He sounds terribly mentally on the mic. He talks fucking complete gibberish and foolishness. Um, <laughs> he's making very weird, erratic decisions with his cornermen. And this just isn't. You know, it's not a stick and ball sport, man. This isn't soccer or or fucking field hockey or something like. You can't just be like, oh, I'm gonna hire a movie Willy coach, Millie. or yeah, or, or smoke a fucking DNT joint and decide to have an old ex fighter fucking corner me. And then while I'm getting the fuck beat out of me, he's going, come on, Diego, let out the nightmare, give him hell, give him hell. I are you fucked in the who, head? Who Stephen? gave worst advice, Stefan Bonner or Mike Perry's ex girlfriend? I mean, probably Stefan. I mean, <laughs> you know what I mean? Just because like, we can hear him shouting more. Old, old, old uh, Mike Perry's ex-girlfriend just at least kept her fucking mouth shut. So no, least... she was shouting weird shit during that fight. But regardless, like, oh, they, they gave equivalent advice. And Stefan Bonner is a fucking fighter. Yeah, but, you know, it, it, he's not a fucking corner man. man. And again, not to say that he uh, probably isn't credentialed to be working certain corners. But, like, what are you doing, Diego? I never. I don't know if I've made this public. Why not? You know what? Fuck it. I'm making. If I haven't already made this public, I'll make it a public now. Hey now. I only have a handful of interviews I've never released. Okay. Never released them because just one thing or another. Either I had difficulties, or I just had an interview, and I won't name the guy. But I had an interview with a guy that's a pretty decent fighter. It was just a terrible interview. Like he wasn't giving right, me right, anything. Right, right, right. He was super that, distracted. That happens from time to time. Uh, I one I had a, one interview, and I think I wound up releasing this. I just kind of cut it out. But he was fucking eating cereal when he was talking to me. Like you could hear him pouring the milk. You could hear him doing Bro, whatever. I mean, it was wild. You like, would what not is happening. You would not believe the shit. I used to be a part of a show a long time ago called Stand and Bang, where we would interview fighters. And um, what the fuck was that prick's name? Now part of it is Efren Escudero. Sorry, just oh, I remember him. Yeah, Efren he Escudero. Fought, he fought a stage North cut. That motherfucker took an interview with us on the beach. We could hear seagulls. The f- <laughs> my homie Aaron was like, uh, Efren, where are you at? And he's like, on the beach. And it's like, you think you could go to your fucking car? We can't hear you amongst the seagulls. And all the fucking wind well, blowing I, in No, here. I don't mind. I mean, here's, I, I will say this. I'm nobody. So for you to sit down and talk to me, I appreciate it. I, I, got, I got no problem. I appreciate it. I'm cool with it. Uh, and, 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 if, and if the interview's bad enough, I just won't release it. You know, it's really not that big of a deal. Yeah, fair enough. Or I'll just cut around it, whatever I can. But there was one interview that I didn't release because I just thought it would embarrass the fighter. Mm-hmm. So I chose not to. Fair and enough. it was Stefan Bonner. Oh, okay. He was absolutely hammered. Oh, wow. When I was talking to him. Gravy. It was real obvious. Fucking drunk. He was giving weird answers to stuff. <laughs> it was right before Chael's son was about to fight somebody. I don't remember who it was. But it was before one. It was like right before one of Chell Sonnen's fights, and we started talking about that. And he was just giving kind of incoherent answers to shit. It was just bizarre. It was just a really weird. At, there's a couple points where I was laughing because I was just like confused as to what was happening, and you could hear me laugh. And I just kind of made the decision. You know what? I'm just not going to release this. It's. I'm just not going to. I don't know if I even have it on here anymore. Oh. I might have deleted it at this point. I was going to say at this point I would totally release it. Nah, I'm not going to release it, but. <clears throat> I, I didn't for a reason, I, and I actually hadn't even really publicly publicly talked about it 
uh, until now for some fucking strange reason. I guess it's linked. So yeah, well, yeah, yeah. It makes sense. He was in the phone. And I'm, and I'm not night. even trying. And I'm not trying to be shitty. I, and, and it sounds like I am because I'm talking about it, and I really shouldn't. Um, but it was just a bizarre experience. It was just such a weird, like, I mean, it was just so obvious that he was just hammered. Right. He was kind of like this, and he was just, he would get real excited, and then he would kind of pop down. Oh, he was like whispering at some points, like trying to pro- like make points. It was just weird. Oh, wow. Just an odd interview. So I was like, yeah, I'm not going to release this. Listen, I'm not going to lie to you. You can pique my fucking interest with this one now. <laughs> now I want to hear him whisper it away, right. fucking creep. All right, listen, what are we going to do with Diego Sanchez? Are we, are we all in agreement? Do we all want to see oh, him retire, right? That's it, it for he, Diego, it, right? He did not. I mean, even Justine is watching the fights last night. And doesn't care about the UFC. Doesn't give two fucks. Barely watches it with me. You know, right, I have right, it on. Right. You know, normally she's just kind of sitting around playing Candy Crush. Right. And we're watching the fight, and she just kind of looks up and is watching, and it's like, one of those people looks like they don't belong. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. <laughs> you don't say. You got that right, bud. And, that, and that's not what it should look like. It's fucking Diego Sanchez. I will say. You should, Diego Sanchez should never be in a fight with fucking anybody that it looks like he doesn't belong. So, so He should look like he belongs in every fucking fight. So let's talk about this angle then. How bad is that for Jake Matthews mm. that he didn't get like an immediate smashing nah, of here's Diego? The thing. I, don't, I don't think... Jake Matthews was still respecting Diego Sanchez's ability to flurry and was still respecting his ability to whatever, you know what I mean? Like potentially get in and land something and just get you with a flurry real quick. Kind of like a John Dotson kind of thing where you could potentially get stopped and really not be all that hurt. Right. So I think he respected Diego enough. I think he also wasn't coming in there with piss and vinegar and really wasn't wanting to just smash the fuck out of Diego Sanchez. Right. And he still beat him 30, 26. I mean, what the fuck else can we ask him? He had a 10-8 round in the third. You know what I mean? Just, I don't know. Leave it be. I, I, don't, I don't judge Jake Matthews whatsoever. I, I, it's, for the, it's the same reason why, you know, Izzy can look the way he looks against Anderson Silva and then come in there and, and look how the fuck he just looked against Costa. Does that mean Costa and Anderson Silva are somehow equivalent? Did you just no. co- did you just compare Anderson and Diego? Is that what you did there? I see what you did there. I, I, and not, I'm not, I'm not going to let it fucking slide. <laughs> either. Not Don't necessarily you're pulling that bullshit. Not necessarily, but I'm saying when, when when you're fighting a legend who that you respect. I mean, Jake Matthews in the lead up to the fight was talking about. It. He's like, I I remember watching season one of the Ultimate Fighter. I remember where I was. I remember what age I was. Like, I, I remember the feeling. I, I, you have to respect that. I wish we had a fucking camera in right now because this is me playing the littlest violin in the world for fucking Jake and his love for Diego. You know what you do? You fucking cut their head off Game of Thrones style. That bull fucking shit he pulled on Diego. Diego looked fucking fat, out of shape, uninspired, and out of his fucking mind. Jake Matthews should have beat the dog piss out of Diego. And I absolutely hold it against him. And you know what? You know why he didn't do it? I don't think it was because he liked Diego growing up. I think it's because he's not that fucking good. And he's I, overrated. I don't think he's necessarily that good, but I, I but I'll give you a pass on this. What, what was that at? Was that at 70 or 55? 70? 70. Yeah. Okay. You think that fucking hazmat prick does that? Let's old Diego slide like that? Or does he just beat the fucking dog shit well, out look, of Diego? Listen, look at Michelle, when Michelle Pajaya fought him. Well, Michelle Pajaya is out of his fucking mind, too, though. What the fuck? <laughs> he's like the fucking. I just think there's, you, you got to respect to a certain extent. You still have to respect Diego Sanchez's ability to potentially flurry and his toughness. And you have to respect that and not just jump in willy-nilly. Imagine, I, I honestly look at it from the perspective of what happens if Diego Sanchez lands a shot on Jake Matthews? Even if, even if the next thing that happens is Jake Matthews finishes Diego Sanchez, if Diego Sanchez even remotely wobbles Jake Matthews, he's getting shit for the rest of his existence. See, so you got to think of the pressure that's on Jake Matthews. Not only do I have to win the fight, but I can't even remotely let him touch me or I'm going to get shit. True. But see, I, I, I guess this is where I do kind of agree with you. But then don't take the fucking fight. Because for all of me... Taking a fight against Diego Sanchez at this point means I'm about to put on a show for y'all. Like, if for me, if Jake Matthews didn't come out and completely starch Diego, it was an L. Because Diego's 195 years old. He was on the first fucking season of The Ultimate Fighter, and that's no hyperbole. You, he literally won that season at fucking middleweight. Do you think—that's oh, crazy. 
Do you think that the bouncer that knocked out BJ Penn can knock out Diego Sanchez at this point? Oh yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah! Who, who on a night, guy? on it? a night where he's fucking hammered in Albuquerque, you bet he could. Fucking, I could probably knock out Diego Sanchez if he was fucking shit house hammered on a fucking Saturday night in a bar. And BJ Penn too. That's fucking straight up disrespectful. Bring it up. It's fucking <laughs> embarrassing and hideous. <laughs> fucking bouncer. You like I just know, fuck, I just took a knife and was just like. I know you had to, yeah you had to bring had fucking to BJ up, didn't you? I had to do it. Um. Yeah, I don't know. I I I feel like next up we're gonna talk about the flyweight division. <laughs> yeah, Jesus Christ, we're bringing this fucking show to a screeching halt. Um, I, I I just feel like in that fight, Jake Matthews needed to destroy Diego. To, to, he did to... thirty twenty six. No, it, you yes. don't. You don't destroy somebody All that makes it to the belt. Three judges scored a ten eight round in the third round. Yeah, but what? That's a that is destruction. That's bullshit. A ten eight round in the third round. That means you just couldn't finish him. You just couldn't get it done, could you, Jakey boy? Put the, and, then he, and then he hopped up and let out a howl like he, man, like he just went fucking five rounds with Habib. <laughs> Sit down and relax, Jake the Snake. Son, you got a long way. Look, we'll see what happens. I, all bullshit aside, I'm not overly enthused to watch Jake Matthews' next fight. Like, I don't think he's about to cause a wave at welterweight. No, I don't think so. Matter of fact... With judging from that performance, I think that the next time he fights a welterweight that's like ranked and around his age, he's going to get worked. Welterweight's a fucking shark thing. I think you're putting too much stock into it. Yeah, I, I don't think you're giving any respect to exterior factors. As in what? Respect for Diego's game of 13 years ago? Like, you better smash that old man. That ain't who that was now. I don't give a fuck how Diego used to fight. He's old and fat now, man. Or just not or, or just not necessarily having that, like, inner drive to just smash the fuck out of someone. Well, then I suggest go get in a soccer ball. You're in the wrong sport, buddy. Or just, or, or the next time he comes in, he has that. You know, okay, like, well, we can fuck you. Yeah. Good luck with hoping on that fucking wish. I mean, may, yeah, maybe. Let's see if he's got the fucking killer instinct next time. But <laughs> shit didn't work out for Roy McDonald. I don't know. He fucking, he beat the guy 30 I, mean, I, I don't know what else we want from him. I mean. I, I, I wanted a finish, all, like a, a drum. I know you did. I wanted a finish, and it, I, you know, I was less I, than impressed. I, I'm not going to judge it. I, I, we'll, we'll wait and see what happens. I don't really give a fuck about Chick Matthews. <laughs> anyway, One way so. or the other. You know what I mean? I don't fucking care. Okay, now. Quickly, let's put a bow on this. We know what we, we all know what we think should happen with Diego. Now, now, what does happen with Diego? D- does he fight again? Does yes. Dana actually? You, you think he does fight again? Yes. I think he's done. I put more faith in Dana White than you guys. I think. Well, that, did I think he, that, did, did he beat Mickey Gall? Right. Yeah, yeah. I, I know. I know. But I, I think after and then last he technically night, beat. <laughs> did you hear the fucking oh, yeah. the commentator? I tweeted about that. When that he said he, that was he a low beat key him on diss. paper. I was oh, like, on yeah, paper. Yeah. He's like, two out of three on paper. Like, that was a low-key diss, On paper is a diss. He's yeah. like, yeah, we all fucking know. Yeah, we all yeah. know you didn't win that shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think Dana White knows that, though. I, I think I think, I think, think that Dana White's going to be like, nah, bro, we don't need your services. Go on to Bellator if you want to keep fighting, but I don't want to no, be no, in the no. Diego business. You are out of your fucking mind. How, dude, the last time BJ Penn fought... They brought him out on the on puppet strings. He was just fucking being marionetted down the fucking hall, just legs kicking in the fucking, wasn't even touching the ground, just kicking off the fucking air. I mean, and they just threw him in that cage and let him do his thing. Listen, and by do his thing, get the fuck kicked out of him. BJ is fucking BJ, though. BJ's a guy. Diego get- Sanchez, as yeah, he, he's not where BJ Penn is, but he. Yeah, cue, cue the fucking gif of Corey Anderson screaming about levels. There are levels to this. Diego's cute, but BJ is a goddamn fucking legend. I, I know I know Diego is too. Everybody keep your pennies at work, but I'm saying there are levels. I think they're gonna fucking Diego ain't never been a champion. If, if they got a weekend at Bernie's fucking Diego Sanchez into that cage, if he's willing to do it, Dana's willing to put it on. Listen, Diego and BJ can go fight each other in bare knuckle championship. That sounds about right at this point. I don't want to see either one of those particular gentlemen. Diego needs to be at fifty five anyway. Well for so, starters, yeah. For so sure. Fucking have him have him fight BJ Penn. Yeah. If, if they're gonna trudge, if they're gonna fucking trudge BJ Penn back out there, I don't know if they are or not. They're not. Going he to. might be done. I, I they might have been. All right. <laughs> uh, no, we, well, they're we, not. They're not we the have some type of morality. Yeah. Well, I, th- I think they might be out of the Diego business too at this point. I think so. I, he's he's really not looking great. I think you see him again. Okay. We'll see. I'd, I'd bet you a fiver right now. You you see, you see that motherfucker again. 
Like tell you what, I'm not that confident. I ain't gonna put. <laughs> you might be right. You might be right. I hope. Maybe I just. I'm hoping we don't see him fight again. I don't want to see. Well, for what? For what? What's the reason to keep watching Diego compete at this point? I mean, I don't know. What was our live mouth bet, by the way? Uh, we well, if they do Hazmat and Di- and Damien. Oh, okay. Got if it, they got do, it, got they got still got to line it up. But if they do it, I like Damien. I still like. Ooh, all the hype is so crazy about Hazmat. No, I'm, I'm still. I, I love it. I love it. Uh, I is is love that it. his nickname, Hazmat? No, that's his real name. Is it? It's, it's. 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 There's a. I was thinking about that today. Fucking tricky Russians. Why the fuck would you put a silent K in front of someone? For what? For what fucking earthly reason would it be K H A Z M A T and you pronounce it Hazmat? What the fuck is the K there? <laughs> I mean, for what reason? I mean, English has silent K's, knife. Yeah, well, we don't need them either. (laughs) That's a fucking stupid thing. It's confusing and dumb. A (laughs) silent K. Matter of fact, a silent letter in general. What the fuck would it be? A silent letter? For what? (laughs) What purpose could it possibly serve? Uh, Demetri Martin has a whole joke about silent letters, and it's pretty funny. Yeah, well, I fucking get it already. We can listen to that when we're done. Fucking tedious. Uh, So... Let's move on to the main and co-main. We'll start with the okay. co-main. I, I can't say the co-main was all that surprising. Yeah, that was the fight that I feel like I just didn't really have a beat on. But when it, when you actually watched it unfold, I guess I was shocked. I guess I was like, well, hope you fuck. Like, it actually happened. I, ironically enough... That's exactly what I thought would happen. See, and it's like I, I don't—I don't know why, and I never say that, so I'm not. I never claimed yeah. to be able to predict fights, but I felt it. I felt like I, 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 I'm not saying this is what happened. It but actually for, makes me excited for him to fight John Jones. Honestly, no, let's let's not get crazy now. Um, I, I I thought that um, Dominic Reyes was going to be a little overconfident because of his performance against John Jones. I still think that John Jones in his last three fights has been very uninspired and all of those gentlemen's success that came against John Jones should be tempered a little bit. I don't think you really got the best of John Jones. And on the flip side, I think Jan Blokovich, again, man, those fucking, you know, elder fucking European fighters that have been in the game for a long time, those motherfuckers are focused in a different level. Like, he was not going to come in unprepared or overconfident. Jan was going to come in focused, trying to do exactly what he did. And I felt like, like, yo, when Jan knocked out Luke, it's easy to be like, oh, well, Luke's got a glass jaw. And maybe he does. But make no mistake about it, dog. Luke Rockhold is still a bad, bad man. That's when I was like, all right, Jan is pretty tough. Then he fucking starts us out Corey Anderson. For as much shit as I like to give old Big Nips, he was a real tough guy, really hard to deal with. Jan, not like so, I knew that Jan had some real fucking power. We've just never patient. really seen that. Have we even seen that happen to Dominic Reyes? Uh, no, but he's a young fighter in the game. It's another thing that I think people get a little carried away about these days. Everybody, even with like Hazmat and the whole most of it. Everybody gets way too carried. Like, Dominic Reyes looked good, but I, again, I didn't put as much stock into the John Jones fight as everybody did. I didn't think, well, he basically beat John Jones, so that basically means he's the greatest of all time. So, I'm like, blah, 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 blah. it is hard not to do that. Uh, yeah, but I, I, I'm never one for that. And, and again, he's looked good, but he hasn't looked, to me, he never looked like crazily impressive. I don't know. I just kind of felt like this was the one that Jan was going to fuck around and upset him. I thought if Dominic came in a little too confident, Jan was going to thunderstrike him. And, and actually, that's kind of, I wouldn't have called precisely the, the, the left hook or whatever, the right hook that like hit him behind the ear. But that's kind of exactly what I thought would happen, man. I thought, you know, Jan would clip him and follow, uh, finish, uh, follow him to the ground and get a quick finish. Like, I just, I, that's exactly kind of what I thought would happen, man. So, yeah. It is what it is, Jack. I, I figured. Now, Okay, jump in. Are you actually excited to see him versus John Jones now, or or are you getting a little ahead of yourself? Here? No, I, I think that that's the kind of performance we needed from someone at 205. If John was still – pretend like John was still champion, and it was Dominic Reyes versus Jan Blahovic to, to see who's going to fight John next, right? Mm. Pretend like it was just normal. That's the kind of performance you need to be like, all right, I mean – Listen, John has been uninspired, and if you now go in uninspired against this guy who's knocking everybody out, I don't care how immortal, untouchable you think you are, it fucking looks like if if Jan can connect, he can lay anybody out. Sure. Even people that aren't, don't get finished. Right. So, you know, it just... 
that's the kind of fight that we I, I don't know it's like that's what you needed to see if john was still at the helm now john's not there so i don't necessarily care but right. if he was still there this would be like a, all right now before this fight i didn't really care i've i've slept on yawn this entire time right, right, right this is the first time i'm like all right fine. okay maybe we should take him fine seriously. yeah okay but what else like there's nothing else to prove you right, got right, right. you got this now there's nobody else at 205 that I, I i feel that way about so now that i feel that yawn is you know truly proven that other than john this is the best guy we got well let's fucking put him together i mean i don't know i i i, I don't really care Ultimately, okay. it doesn't okay. really. Ma- I would rather see John fight Derek Lewis or Naganu right, or right, DC right. at heavyweight or whatever, which right, isn't right, going right. to either. But uh, but I would I would rather see that sure. Stipe than to see him fight Yan. But if but if he's got to fight somebody at two hundred five and he fights Yan, where the last few fights we've kind of been like, oh, who cares? Right, right, right. I actually care about this. Okay. All right, so I got a whole fucking scenario set up here that I want to see happen. Now, a couple moving parts and some things have to happen for all this to go down, but here's what I would love to see happen. A, I do agree with you to a point. What 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 Jan needed to do last night got done. He had a very fucking impressive performance. He got a finish, and we're all getting nice and moist. We're, get, we're heading in the right direction. Now, I'm not ready to lay down upon the table of fuck me with John Jones just yet. But I'm getting there. I tell you what I am ready for. I am ready for Anthony Rumble Johnson okay. to come back to the UFC and fight Jan Blakovich. If you can get through him. And and whoever wins that fight, especially if they do it impressive, if he knocks out Rumble or Rumble comes back and does one of his patented fucking put you to fucking KO snoozy by sleep time to Jan, I would like to ideally see John get a fight at heavyweight in the meantime. Uh, again, ideally, fuck it. Give John Stipe. And John either wins all the marbles and has that fucking heavyweight belt, and we can see if John can be the first one to be the real fucking true king and defend the light and heavyweight fucking belt and, and, and um, yeah. you know, whatever the fuck the word I'm looking for is. Um, and at that point, either way, if if Anthony Rumble Johnson can come back, even if Jan wins, if Jan beats Anthony or, or or vice versa, that's a real challenger at 205. And if John can acquire the heavyweight belt or lose a fight at heavyweight in the meantime, either way, him coming back to 205 sits well with everybody. I, okay, so I'll give you a scenario then where Anthony Johnson isn't coming back. Okay. I'll roll with that scenario. Okay, okay. What needs to happen first is Jan needs to defend against Tiago Santos. He needs to get that win back. Is that the best one we got at, at 205? So yes. let's say Anthony He's doesn't number come two. back. Is Tiago scheduled to fight somebody right now? Let me look. I feel like he is for some reason. Is he scheduled to fight Glover? Am I wrong about that? I think he's scheduled to fight Glover Tejera. Correct. Okay, when is that fight? November happen? 7th. A little far out. A little far out. Okay. Um, so, pull up the light heavyweight rankings, maybe, please. Let's so, see. Let's so, whoever, see so whoever, I'm going to go to UFC.com. Let's see what's um, doing with that. Just our, in case. I, I will give a shout out to our friends over at Sherdog, uh, who's now a part of the Lab Mouth MMA Podcast Network. Not this show. This show is definitely not connected with Sherdog whatsoever. Um, but, but a couple shows in the network are, so please show them some love. Um, but I'm going to go to UFC.com so we can get the true right, right. UFC rankings. Their version of the rankings. I'm not, I'm not talking shit about sure Dog. We're just getting true rankings. Right, right, right. According to, you know, the, the source. So the UFC rankings are as follows. Uh, number one is Dominic Reyes. Number two is Tiago Santos. Number three is Jan. Obviously, that's going to catapult up. Sure. Tiago will stay at two. Dominic will probably fall down to three. Right. Uh, and then you have Glover Teixeira at four. Wow. You have Alexander Rakic at five, which he's kind of the most exciting guy that's there. Sure. Uh, you have the newcomer, the pro, pro Chazaka. Mm-hmm. How do you pronounce his Yuri. name? Yuri. Yeah, Yuri. And then you have Volkan Ozdemir. You got Anthony Smith, the kid to cry a lot, Johnny Walker. We fall off. We, okay, okay. We fall okay, off a okay. cliff. Okay. So, we so, so we have Yuri as the dark horse. And, and, and Rackick. And, and Rackick. I, I say we, I, I don't know if they're lined up to fight each other, but I'm all for that. And then and then we have Glover and Tiago, which are scheduled to fight each other. Correct. So the what win, do we do win. with Jan? Do we just put him on ice for a moment then and, and let this Tiago and, and Glover, Glover fight, fight happen? happen? Sure. Wow. Could we have Glover Tejera fighting for a, t- for a fucking light heavyweight title imagine in 2021? If, imagine if you only get, like... Because I, I think yo. what's going to happen to 205 is what you haven't necessarily seen 
a lot of in any division, really. Um, but I think you're just going to see that title just moving. Kind of like heavyweight. John, not there. I think it's just going to be Jan's going to win. Maybe he beats Glover or something. Then he loses to Rakic, and then Rakic loses to whoever else. Sure, and sure, then sure. You're, you're just going over the next couple of years. I think you're, you're not going to have anybody dominant. There's no way. And fi- listen, I'm on board now with Jan. I'm on board. I should have been on board sooner. I will completely uh, apologize and and eat crow for that. Ain't no fucking way the guy's dominating a two of five. Well, he's very no he's very beatable, no doubt about it. But you know, you know what I like about Jan though, um, Jan has what Tyron Woodley lacks, and, and that's um, the ability desire? to desire. Well, or <laughs> just Did you fucking see that stat by the way. What in the Tyron Woodley? That fight? Woodley has in his last like dude, it's some obnoxious number like 75 minutes of fighting or something yeah he's thrown like 140 punches yeah 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 that that, that was my point that I was there's been make. more punches thrown around on a card yesterday yawn will let his hands go you know what i mean he will let his hands go and that's fucking important dog like the the yawn blockovich is dangerous because he'll come at you now Again, you're right. Somebody from 205 will probably expose that and knock him out too. But he's a very dangerous fighter because he will not sit there and wait all night. Eventually, he will come at you and throw them fucking ham cannons, and you got to avoid it. Uh, um, <laughs> okay. You want to move on to the main? Uh, yeah. Another shout out to the network. The uh, Shillin and Duffy recap, again, sponsored by Sherdog, well, is on, is up. So go, if you want to listen to a recap of the entire card, please go check that out. Okay, okay. Uh, Reyes, quickly, what, what, what would you like to see him do next? Um, uh, fight the loser of Teixeira and... Um, Tiago. Tiago. Okay. All right. All right. Easy fix. And I'm cool with that. I don't want to see him drop down too much. Or, right or, or again, potentially like Rakic Uyuri <clears throat> if that opens yeah, itself yeah. up. Fair enough. Fair enough. Okay. Um, yeah, so still, still keep him up there. He's good. He's young. Sure. He has a chance to right. learn, get better. I mean, look at where fucking Jan was a couple of years ago. Sure, sure. I right, mean, who would have right. guessed he'd right, be in this right, position? Right. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. You know, you have everybody. Mm. If that proves anything, you got to give everybody a chance. You don't know what they're going to grow into. You, you can't, you can't discount the human factor. I don't care how much you've lost. I don't care how badly you've lost. You can't discount the human factor of truly wanting something and pushing yourself and rising above adversity. Right, like you right, can right. never discount people that are able to do that because on any given day, they can revert back to who they were, sure, but on any given day, they can beat anybody. If Yawn went in there and knocked out John Jones, it wouldn't blow me away because we've seen it. We've seen if he's on, he's on. And for whatever reason, the dude just has crazy power. So Polish power, baby. You know what I mean? Guy, guy like Jimmy Manawa at one point, right? I mean, you really couldn't count him out. And I don't think Jimmy Manawa would ever be in, in a position where he could come back. I don't know if he's even in the UFC anymore, but I don't think he's in a position where he could ever come back. But a guy like that, if, sure. he, if he can get back to the – Winning ways, you know what I mean? Yeah. The guy could knock anybody out sure, on sure, any sure. given night. Yeah, yeah. And it's just like... That sort of power has to be respected Exactly, because regardless. at no point they can do any... Or at any point they can do anything. Yeah, yeah. Um, so moving on up to Adesanya one. Costa. My Lord. Like... What is there to say? What I mean, what? Who, like, real question. If that's how Adesanya looks, let's let's say that's just... Every fight, that's that's what homeboy looks like, right? How on earth do you beat that? Like, what do you do? Like, how are you, how are you supposed to beat that? This is what makes um, MMA or, or fighting or whatever, however you want to put it, so fucking compelling. It is is because there is a way to beat him, and somebody will figure it out. We all just have to sit back and watch. I've I've seen so many. I mean, we, 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 how many times have we went through this in this sport? Right, there was a time where Anderson Silva had this exact allure. Um, GSP, Ronda Rousey. I mean, so many guys. I mean, Chuck Liddell at a certain time, man. There was ways like, who's going to beat this guy? How are you going to beat this guy? And that and that puts us on one of these extremely compelling journeys where now each time somebody fights Israel, 
you're like, well, we still go through that with John Jones. I mean, th- th- these sort of guys are what makes this sport and this, you know, just martial arts in general so fucking intriguing. Because you're right. On the surface, it's like, what are you going to do with this fucking guy? Seems like he can avoid any sort of, like, grappling. He doesn't seem susceptible to his defensive wrestling is good. It, you're surely not going to outstrike him. He has been knocked out before in kickboxing, so it's obviously possible. But he he looks fucking fantastic right now. And, you know... I don't know what you would do to fuck with this guy. But, but again, 85 is, is more stacked than it's been in a long time. There's a lot of fucking talent coming up in the division. So we're going to really get to see Israel tested. And to be fair, to be fair, we're at the beginning of his reign. We've yeah. only seen him fight, you know, um, and not that there's actually a lot of guys who possess this sort of skill at 85, even just over history. But, like, we haven't seen him fight, like, a real sort of – Damian Maya type character, and I don't mean like Damian now, but like a newer sort of uh, just just um, brute on the ground that can force him to the ground and make him grapple. Like yeah. you know, we, we, there are some styles out there that we haven't seen Izzy face yet. We haven't seen him face a a, a Kobe Covington sort of character at middleweight yet. That's just going to pressure him and keep the pressure on. Yeah. But but. As for right now, for the performances he's having, last night was a big, big fight, man. And, and you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. But going into the goddamn fight, Paulo Costa was getting all the credit he deserved as a very credible fucking challenger. And he was. And Izzy made him look like he didn't even fucking belong in there. So you've yep. got to give the fucking credit where it's due. I mean, that was a big test. And fucking Izzy f- passed with flying colors. Yeah, I, I don't know what else on earth he could have done. I mean, that was a flawless performance pretty much. Oh, yeah, flawless victory, absolutely. And, and Costa just looked way out of his element. He just – when you can make a guy like that look like he doesn't belong, yeah, that is a feat. I mean, there's I mean, levels. That is a feat to just make someone like that – Look like he doesn't belong anywhere near that fucking cage. Yeah. That's how it looked. Yeah, he looked. He had nothing to offer. He was trying so hard to go Izzy, who just well, didn't take it at all. <laughs> you know? And here's the thing: I and, tell even, you what, and even if he did get him to goat, he was the one getting tagged. You know what's interesting is this fight, almost in a weird way, sort of kind of justifies what Yoel did. I kind of get it now. What you don't want to do is engage with Izzy. If you get the swing in at Izzy, and you can kind of tell now, Izzy's obviously a counter striker, and he will go on the offensive. But like, you almost have to lay back with him unless you're going to, you know, put the grappling pressure on him or something. If you're going to strike with Izzy, you do not want to come in swinging on him first because his fucking counters are just so precise and deadly, and you can see it. That's what he he popping you in the leg, popping you with the jab. What he's really doing is waiting on you to commit and swing so he can fucking thunder strike you. And that's exactly what he did. He caught old big dumb Paulo swinging in, popped him right behind the ear. Down he goes. And one thing I got to give Izzy too, man, and this is something that a lot of guys, people might not think it's so much of a big deal, but Izzy has that motherfucking finishing mentality, that killer instinct. When he gets you hurt, fucking forget about it. If he clips you and he sees those little legs go wobbly and you go down, dude, did you see the fucking elbow? I I thought that maybe the fight got stopped a little early, but then when I was watching the replay, Izzy didn't even really get to land the elbow because Paulo was turning over. I'd be be calling him Paulo and shit. Paulo. Um, But, boy, Izzy threw his whole little skinny body into that elbow, and he whiffed with it a little bit. But if they didn't stop that fight right when they did, that other arm was about to land an elbow on Paulo's face that was about to fuck him up. Right. Izzy was throwing some se- – like he was – that fight was about to get finished. Izzy was not letting him up, dog. And that sort of uh, – Killer instinct finishing mentality is fucking, you know, something that also makes him a very, very yeah. dangerous fighter. It was absolutely astounding. I, 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 that, that was a flawless, you know, it, it, it wasn't completely reminiscent of this, but like when Connor fought Eddie, well, you're just like, yeah, what yeah, the yeah. fuck else could he have done? You yeah. know, like, all, all, almost a though, right, fight. right, I almost mean, though. He, he, he landed kick after kick after kick after kick. Anytime Paulo came in, he punched him, he made Paulo kind of sit back. I mean, it was. Dude, I, I mean, and it wasn't even like one of those deals where it was just like a a, a one shot strike. Like he he, you know, it, it was second round, right? 
Uh, that or third. Okay, yeah. So, so you know, Bolo had a chance. You know what I mean? It wasn't like, oh, oh, he just clipped me early. Nah, bro, you had like fucking ten minutes to, to land your shot. He just, he just beat you up. He beat you in every sense of the word. Uh, no, it was round two. Round two, okay, right, right. towards the end. Right, right, right. So you know, Paulo had some time, man. Same, almost the same exact finishing time of, uh, of uh, the co-main. There was oh, there was about a 30, 37 second difference <laughs> between the, the two fighters. Um, all right, let's get to our <clears throat> loudmouth question of the day for Twitter. So I'm going to record onto Twitter here. Okay, and uh, we're going to get a question of the day. You don't even know what the question is yet. I have no idea. So you're going to hear me say it right now. Okay. All right, so we're doing our uh, Not Safe for Work MMA show question of the day. Uh, so if you're listening to this on Twitter, make sure you can listen to the entire podcast and our response to this question. Uh, Fred, my co-host for the Not Safe for Work MMA show, does not know this question yet, so I'm going to give it to him. Uh, we're going to go through every single division, and we're going to determine if there is any must-see fighter in those divisions, and then kind of figure out who are the must-see fighters, period. And then we'll kind of give a definition of that and, and what qualifiers we need to consider someone to be a must-see fighter, right? So tune in for that. And if you guys have any uh, suggestions, who are the must-see fighters in the UFC uh, in any division, you let us know. So we'll hit done there. Uh, Fred, if you want to retweet that, that'd be great. Okay. Uh, I'm going <clears> to <throat> uh, I'm just gonna say who are the must-see fighters, question mark, and, uh, and there you go. So it's on there. I'll, I'll tag you, Fred. Uh, Kirby underscore. And here I come. Here I come. Kirby underscore. How, how do I do this? Kirby. How the f- why can I not fucking type? This should have been a, a real quick thing. All right. So there you go. You can retweet that. And uh, by the time we're done talking, we will uh, see if we have any responses to uh, our question. So I'm going to go through each division. And we're going to determine... If there are any must-see fighters that are in are, that are in these divisions, all right. There is no women, women's featherweight division, so we don't need to discuss that. Uh, but the champion of the women's featherweight coincides with the champion at women's bantamweight. So the question I have for you, Fred: Do you consider Amanda Nunes to be a must-watch fighter? Absolutely. <clears throat> I mean, I, okay, is this for me? Or or Joe Blow public. Everybody. This is this is this is if if you could determine Joe Q public's opinion. Okay. That you think yeah. these are must see fighters. Yes, 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 yes. Absolutely. She's quite possibly the greatest female fighter we've ever seen. So if that bitch ain't must see TV, then I don't know what the fuck is. Like ab- absolutely, yes. Amanda Nunes. Let me is let me go see. through the top few people that at women's bantamweight, and you just kind of tell me if you believe any of these people and, you would consider must see. And let me say this going up front. Then if we're going to do this, let me say that my my must see will be very um. Uh, 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 strict. Yes, for so sure. I, I'm not going to give these out all way. There will be a lot of very good fighters that will not make this sure. list. So and, like, and you can give honorable mentions if you'd like. Right, 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 right. So you got mm-hmm. Jermaine Durandamine, Holly Holm, Aspen Ladd, Pena, Raquel Pennington, Aldana, Ketlin Vieira, uh, Kuniskaya, Sarah McMahon, Marin Renault. Those are your top ten at bantamweight. None of those are must-see. No, not yeah. for me. I mean, none, none of those are me. must-see. Not for me. Holly Holm was for a brief moment, but I think that ship is sailed. Yeah. After the after the Ronda Rousey win for a brief moment, she was must see, but that, that ship is so at this point. Champion of flyweight, you got Valentina Shevchenko. Do you consider her to be must see? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Similar to Nunes. S- in, very in similar. That, yes. Yes. In that she's I mean, just, just top of her game. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, the other top ten at twenty five, you got Caitlin. You got Caitlin Chukagan, Cynthia Calvillo, Jennifer Maya, Lauren Murphy, Jessica I, Joanne Calderwood, Roxanne Montefiore. Obviously a must see. Uh, <laughs> Andrew Hidley, Macy Barber. Uh, n- none of those others. You know, Macy Barber. Could Macy have been Barber's, that. yeah. Honorable mention. Interesting girl, but but still way Probably too. Probably she just uh, lost as well, so we have to. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, not, not quite what I would call must see by these definitions, no. The f- champion at straw weight is Weili Zhang. She must see. I mean, Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. Same reason, just to, as the champion, and we, we, we truly consider her to be number one. Yeah, and, and, and for, for the record, too, all those women are action fighters as well. Shevchenko, Nunez, and uh, uh, Weili Zhang. All action Shevchenko's fighters. Shevchenko's definitely been a part of some fights that aren't great. Yeah, but she's been a part of a lot of good ones, too. I mean, she's, she's generally speaking, very entertaining. So also at Strawweight, you got Rose Namajunas. Now, I do consider Rose must-see 
For me, Rose Namajunas okay. is must-see. Jessica Andraj? No, not quite. Uh, Tatiana Suarez? No. Could be. Not for me. Not Could for be, me. But we'll we'll have to see where yeah. she goes. Yeah. Uh, Joanna? Yes. Yes, she is. I, I hate her face, and there's a lot of things that I don't like about her visually, but... um. Yeah, yeah. She, if we're talking about must-see fighters, Joanna is, is very much must-see. Even after losing the belt, <clears throat> all of her fights have been absolute fucking wars and, and, and very relevant for the division and so on and so forth. So, yeah, yeah. Very, very um, must-see, no doubt. Uh, then you have Carla Sparza, Claudia <laughs> Gadea, Michelle Waterson, uh, Mariana Rodriguez. Michelle Watterson, honorable mention, not quite must see, but I mean, fuck, I, I you know, I, I enjoy all of her fights. I must say, I, I would say that maybe you know she loses the big one from time to time, but but she's always entertaining and fun. So basically, our must sees are the champions of each division, and then strawweight, and then and then at strawweight we have Rose. Can we all just agree then at this point that women's strawweight is by far the best women's yes. division by a country fucking mile? Absolutely, because you have Tatiana Suarez there, who's we'll see where she's going. You still got Joanna there, who can kind of turn it back on. Any got moment Thug here. Rose. Uh, we got yeah. we got some. We got the, yeah. Uh, women's strawweight is actually fun. Fucking fly. So we got four women at, at acro- across three and a half divisions. Uh, that are musty. You got four women that are musty. So okay, cool. I, I got no is, no no problem there. Fair enough. Yeah. So let's go to heavyweight. Uh, do you consider Steve to be musty? Yes, yes. Um, I, I, I will be brutally honest and say probably just because he has the belt. If Steve was ranked five or six, I don't know if he makes this list for me. But as of right now, I mean, he's probably the greatest UFC heavyweight champion of all time. Okay. He holds the belt. I mean, yeah, yeah. You you, you got to watch Steve fight for sure. Must see. Okay. Uh, you got Francis Ngannou. Come on now, baby. <laughs> That's the definition of us for now. I mean, listen, he did have that fucking stinker with Derek Lewis one time, but lest we forget. But as of right now, this moment, must-see TV in the cage. Francis, is the, as not only is he must-see, but he's probably at the top of that list. Uh, Curtis Blades? Mm. Yeah. I don't <laughs> think so, buddy. <laughs> that might, he might make some of you other pricks list, but not Daddy Fred. Rosenstruck? No. Derek Lewis? Yes. I think the problem with Derek is he's really, again, has had some fucking stinkers. He has. But, but just I think he's must-see from the perspective of his post-fights are phenomenal. Well, sure. You know what I mean? And pre-fights, as far as it goes. Yeah, are phenomenal. He's fun to watch. And then when he when he has a good fight, it's a great fight. Sure, sure, you know sure. I mean, it's every like, once in a while, he it's, lays either, an it's egg. either a great fight or he lays an egg. And there, you know, there's really nothing in between. And usually, more than often, it's great fights. Yeah, yeah. yeah Derek Lewis is must see TV. Sorry. Uh, what about Alistair Overeem? Do you consider him to be must see still? No, no. Sorry. And then we'll just kind of go down. You got Volkov, Junior dos Santos, Walter Harris, after Akimov, Augusto Saki, uh, Olenek. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. No. Yeah, All right. So at heavyweight, we got Stipe. John got Francis, Jones, baby. We got Derek Lewis. And then. Should we put John Jones at heavyweight? I mean, let's put John Jones at okay. heavyweight. And obviously. And he's considered must For fuck's sakes. Yeah, he's he's obviously. We consider John see. Jones on that uh, So let's go to light heavyweight. Is Jan a must-see fighter at this point? Now he is. Yes. He won the belt. And, I mean, to be fair, he deserves it. He's coming off some knockout wins. For, for me, he's there. He is must-see TV at this point. Is Dominic Reyes or Tiago Santos or Glover Teixeira or any of those guys considered must see? I keep going down the list, but no. What, okay. Now, what about Yuri and Rakic? Rakic, no for me. Yuri, yes. Uh, Yuri, we haven't seen lose yet. We haven't seen him show that weakness yet. For me personally, there's still a lot of intrigue there. I, I you know, I'm interested in Rakic, Rakic, or how the fuck you pronounce his name, but but we've seen him lose, and it, and it, that that kills a little bit of the steam for me. Sure. Um, <clears throat> Yuri's still super interesting, though. Now, which... Yeah, he lost to Ozdemir. Yeah, yeah. And not to be a cunt, but that's... And then, you know, he he, he won the, the fight against Anthony Smith, but it was... Yeah. yeah. You know, it ain't like he came out and blew his doors off, so... All right. And then uh, Ozdemir, Anthony Smith, Nikita Krylov. Johnny Walker, do you consider him must-see at this point? Not no more. Not no more. No, I agree. No. Just, I want to, but he's not must too easily. Yeah, he's not must see. Now, is he must see in that his fights are pretty much always going to be a blast? Sure, 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 sure. He's inter- so honorable if you're, mention. If you're, if you're, honorable mention. I'm yeah. there. Honorable mention. Yeah, for him. he's entertaining. Honorable mention for Joanna. Honorable mention for. Uh, for do we say Joanna's? Oh no, no, Yanni's. Joanna's on. Honorable mention for Sh- Michelle Waterson. Yes, yes, yes. Honorable yes. mention for Johnny Walker and Angela Hill for that record too. If we're throwing out the honorable mentions, just because I, I think she's fucking you know every fight she's in now is fucking super entertaining. Yeah. The fights they have were great. 
Uh, again, two straw weights, too. Sirkinov, Ryan strong. Span, Enkelov, Shogun, Paul yeah. Craig. Yeah, again, yeah, Enkelov, those guys. Some, some interesting guys there, but nobody's must see. All right. Uh, let's go to middleweight. We got Israel Adesanya at the top. Easy, uh, easy, clearly, easy, yeah. easy, easy. Who do you think is the most must see of anybody in the in, in the UFC? Is it still John? I mean, it's probably Connor if we're if we're. If, if, but if, I'm, if he's I'm in assuming the game. Connor's gone. Connor's gone. DC's gone. Must Ronda Rousey's see. Gone. Um, I mean, it, it depends on where we're going with this, man. There's a couple people, man. Honestly, right now, one of the most must see people in the fucking sport is the fucking hazmat prick. I mean, if we're just keeping it a bean, like that, that, that motherfucker's got a lot of hype on him. Uh, Habib is, is going to be extremely must see. Um, and Ganu is, is fucking going to put him in front of the fucking desk. And then obviously, John Jones, especially if he fights a heavyweight, is going to be so, probably. So you kind of put Adesanya below all those people? Mm, no, no, no. Not after okay, well, last so night. So where do you put Adesanya? Uh, right up there, right up there with him. I think, I think a lot of this is, is very contingent upon who they fight. Who's next for them? Just on their own, just like it don't matter who they fight, they're the one to see. I mean, maybe in Ganu, just based on fear or sheer fucking, you know, curiosity's sake. But I think it's very important on who they face. Who's John sure. fighting a heavyweight? Who is Izzy uh, fighting next, you know? Are there any of the fighters we've listed so far that it just doesn't matter who they fight, they must see? Mm. I would say Naganu. For the most part. Yeah, kind of. But I, I, I think all of them kind of need the right dance partner to be, you know, extremely must-see. I mean, you know, Amanda so, Nunes, all those people are must-see. But then, yeah, the right so, dance partner. So you don't think of who we've listed so far, you don't think they're on the level with Rousey and McGregor where it just didn't matter? No, not really. No. You pretty much trot them out against anybody. We're, we're fucking down. No. Uh, to me, no. Nagano's the closest just because of the freak show factor. But even then, if you're talking Rousey, McGregor, and Gano don't do those numbers. T- yeah, not for sure. yet. For not sure. yet. No, yeah. No, we don't got one of those yet. Izzy could be heading there, but we're not there yet. Either. So let's go down middleweight. We got Robert Whitaker. No, I don't consider him a must see. No, no, no. Uh, Paulo Costa. I would say after last night, no. But no. other than that, yes. Honorable mention. I mean, again, very, very exciting guy, but not quite. Uh, Jared that. Cannonier. No. Jack Hermanson. No. Yola Romero. No. Again, all great fighters, but not what I would call must see. Darren Till. We just seen him lose too much. No. Uh, Derek Brunson. Kelvin Gastelum, Chris Weidman, Uriah Hall, Shazaban, Tavares. Again, again, uh, make, make no mistake about it. Very, very tough guys, very good fighters, but like no, what I would not, consider must see. You cannot miss this. Cancel all yeah. your motherfucking events because this person's fighting. Nah. Uh, not in this rankings, of course, but what about Anderson Silva? Do you still consider him to be you gotta watch if they're no. if they're trotting him out, you gotta watch him? Absolutely not. Okay. I yeah. mean, for dickheads like us, absolutely. But if you're again, you're the average Joe Blow, like, oh my God, this might be the fight of the century. Of course not. Anderson Silva's 142 years old. Uh all right, let's move on down to one fifty or one seventy. Uh Kamar Usman. You know what, man? This pains me to say this, and this I think is will be the first champion that I might give a, a, a no to, but I don't think so. Now, again, this is not my necessarily. Who would opinion, you rather but... watch, Usman or Covington? Who's more must see to you? To me, Usman, because he's the king, and I'm very interested in who the greatest is, being cognizant of the fact that probably Colby is the right answer to this because he's so fucking polarizing and interesting. I mean, for all of the great fighter that Usman is and all of the shit that he represents that a lot of us sort of left-leaning liberals might uh, uh, appreciate – He's not that interesting. He's just not, and that's not even a bad thing. He's just that guy, right? He he's sort of a quiet. Uh, 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 he, he, listen, he's that's why he's the fucking champ. He doesn't do Stays a lot focused. of talking. Yeah, yeah. but it, you know, as far as must see, I suppose if I'm being honest, a little bit of that is a little bit of your your bravado and your swag. Um, yeah, I, it, must see within our bubble, but like I don't think he's there yet with the masses. Uh, so we're both going to put Usman and Covington, I think, as honorable mentions. Uh, Gilbert Burns, Leon Edwards. Yeah, I mean, listen. It, and, I, and I'll keep going down the list. But Gilbert Burns, Leon Edwards, do you consider either one of them? No, I can't, I, I can't very well consider them must see if I'm, if, if if I'm, I'm not, not giving it to guy. Usman. Yeah. Um, and what about Jorge Masvidal? Yes, see? yes, yes. Sorry, but yeah, this is that's the way this th- this thing sort of works. I mean, he is he was the reason that the last fight with Usman was so big. Truth be told, uh, what about Stephen Thompson? 
If he's fighting, is it must-see? No, no. I, I'm always super intrigued because of who he is and what he does and what we know he can do striking-wise. But as far as, like, again, you're inviting all the buddies over, I don't think so, no. And we'll go down a little bit more. Demi and Maya. Uh, no, not no more. Of course, obviously not Woodley anymore. Nope. Michael Chiesa gets at one point, but not anymore. Yep, not Del quite. Del at one point, not anymore. Exactly. Uh, Neil Magny, never. Uh, <laughs> so we both... Why do we hate Neil Magny? I don't know, but I hope, I I hope they gave him hazmat. Like, I, like, that way I can be happy about him? that fight one way or the other. Why do we hate him? I don't know. Vincent Luque, uh, Nate Diaz, I think, just I, you he's know one what? of the most polarizing people in the world. He, yeah, he still, he still is. Again, it might not be fair, but make no mistake about it. If Nate Diaz comes back and fights him, watching. if he fights a mop handle, we're all going to fucking tune in and he's, we're going to watch him fucking flip the mop handle of the bird and give it an arm bar. Like, it, it ain't fair, but certain fighters just, just cement a sort of legacy. Bro, if Nick Diaz fought tomorrow, it's must-see TV. And I'm sure there are a lot of people out there right now that are probably listening to this going, Oh, man, fuck that. Nick, Nick ain't fought. Sorry, buddy. It just is. And and if you think I'm wrong, wait till Nick fights next year. Because I do think that Nick Diaz is going to fight again. I think he's training. And I'm not saying he's going to win, win, lose, draw, whatever. But mark my words. When Nick Diaz does come back, it will be a big deal. He will be in a, a co-main or a main event slot. It will be a big deal. There will be a lot of hype about it. We'll all be doing breakdowns. And everybody will be super fucking stoked to watch the fight. Make no mistake about it. The yeah. Diaz brothers in general are fucking must-see. Period. Any weight class, any I don't care how you cut the fucking cake. I don't care how long it's been since they fought last. They're must-see TV, period. Even if you don't like the cocksuckers, you're watching them fight. Uh, okay, real quick, just because I'm just now hearing about this. So nobody else from, from 170. We'll get to 155 in a second. Um, so apparently Connor shared DMs between him and Dana, and Dana just kind of spoke out about it. And uh, okay, so he shares. Uh, this is in February. So this is my ball. I'm not waiting on the guy. What's there? So this is Connor asking Dana for a fight, basically saying like, "Just book me. I don't care who it is." Uh, and then in February, he actually asked for a Diego fight, which is interesting. Uh, he said a fight late May in LA, me and Diego in Dublin in August. Uh, so he was trying to fight as quick as he could against somebody, then fight Diego in Ireland, which is kind of weird, but whatever. It's extremely fucking weird, but whatever. <laughs> uh, and then they continue again. He's sharing details. So I'm just going to read. This is what Dana White's responding. And there's some stuff that's prior to this, but I don't know. Uh, he said, my guy talked to this is Dana saying this. My guy talked to your team and they told him that you do not want to fight in Brooklyn. If one of them fall out, which is hundred percent fine. I gave you my word that you could have that fight. So I wanted to make sure I kept my word to you. We will get someone else to be ready for Brooklyn. And then February 20th, I'm no step in and you know it. Let's create an event for me. End of May, LA or something wild blow the socks off the place. Dana is hundred percent fine. You and I talked to dinner and you said you wanted it, and I 1,000% always keep my word with you. Nobody wanted you to be the step-in for a million financial reasons. And I said, I don't give a fuck. I gave Connor my word. And then Connor responds, the people want McGregor. People want a McGregor event. Let's give it to him. So this is just him explaining why he retired and explained why he's just fed up with basically not getting booked. And now I think he's – the problem that with Connor is he's now gotten so big to where – he can't just fight anybody, and you can't have him fight right now because there's no fucking crowd, you know, and you lose right. a shit ton of money. <clears throat> so it's like he's in the kind of a weird predicament where he's too popular to fucking fight during all this mess. Well, also, I, to all due respect, I'm the biggest counter fan in the world, too, but what the fuck's he talking about, Diego, bro? I, mean, also, I, like, that's, I don't know even that. Like, and what? it is, <laughs> and I will say this, it is fucking pitiful to share DMs or text messages with anybody without their fucking consent. Yeah. And, and unless somebody, unless you're a girl and dude's creeping in your inbox and you're like, hey, fuck this guy, that's a whole different story. I mean, I, listen, I dig what you're saying. I'm giving him a pass on that. I'm just wondering why the fuck Conor McGregor is actually, I, I almost found that, I, I thought it was bullshit. Like, Conor actually is calling for a Diego Sanchez fight, bro. But Di <laughs> Conor, have you seen Diego lately, bro? What the fuck are you talking about? Yeah, that was kind of bizarre. 
Uh, let's hear what Dan actually said. It's only 38 seconds long. People blown, you have left and right. Um, I mean, everybody here knows. I mean, even the ladies, this is some man code stuff. You know, you don't, you, you just, it's, it's just something you don't do. It's one of the, it's one of the dirtiest things you can do, which, by the way, you know, because uh, we we're just talking about Diego Sanchez, you know, and Diego Sanchez is in there <clears throat> in a private conversation that I was having with Connor. When you're the number two or three ranked guy in the world, and you're, you're telling me that you want to fight, but you want to fight unranked 39-year-old Diego Sanchez in a main event in Los Angeles. People blow me up left. Uh, that's, that's all we have from that. But that is true. Dan is basically like, listen, what, what man, the fuck are you, what are you even talking about? This is why, look, I know I know what Dana does wrong. I know why people dislike Dana. But I swear to God, this is why I fuck with Dana, man, because he do be saying a lot of logical shit sometimes. Like, yes, exactly, precisely. I love you, Connor, but what in the fuck are you talking about? Jake Matthews is half a shitbird. And did you see the beating that he just put on Diego? Like, if you did come out and catch Diego with a fucking 720 spinning hill kick, it wouldn't matter, bro. Like, what the fuck it are you talking? Are you crazy? It hardly mattered that you beat, but you beat Cowboy. Right, right. I mean, well, it's well, like, it's like yeah, like that one counted a little bit. But Diego, what the fuck are you talking about, bro? It like, kind of makes me feel like Connor knows that I, I don't got it anymore. I don't know, dude. I but fuck, how would he even know that? I mean, uh, to be fair, he's only lost to fucking Habib. I mean, yeah, okay, okay, I hear you, I hear you, Nate Diaz, fuck off. But, like, in, in recent memory, he's, oh, and, and again, with the Floyd fight, fuck off. Like, he's lost one fight to Habib, who has never lost to anybody, and it's not like Habib pieced him up on the feet. Habib took him down and exposed his weakness. Like, I've yet to see a fight where it's like, okay, maybe Connor doesn't have it. I mean, damn, he lost to Habib in the way that... Because even when he fought Cowboy, he did exactly what you should do against Well, him. right. I mean, he fucking starched him out with a, with a crazy performance. Now, again, maybe Connor doesn't have it, but I've seen nothing to suggest that yet. Like, for fuck's sake. And can we just, since we're on the fucking topic, can we just address him boxing Manny Pacquiao? Have you heard this little rumor? Yeah. That's supposedly getting a lot of steam behind it? Well, he, he's not even... A, I mean, Connor is the one that started the rumor. Well, yeah, whatever. So, exactly. <laughs> For fuck's sake, boys and girls, Jesus fucking Christ. No, no. Look, I'm all for a fucking freak show, and make no mistake about it, if they make the goddamn fight, I'll be front and center watching the cocksucker. But look, Floyd and Connor was lightning in a bottle. I was there for it. We were all there for it. We were all happy about it. It was cool. It was a cute little experiment, but we seen what happened, and that is what will happen. That is what would happen if uh, if Connor fights Pacquiao, except he probably gets knocked out in the process, and that isn't a slight on Connor, it's just like what are we more power? Do you, well, and he's a boxer. What what are we doing? Why the fuck would we want to watch Connor box Manny Pacquiao at this point? I mean, for what? I would rather see him fight Polly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. If we were, I mean, all bullshit aside, if we were going to do that, it just makes fucking zero sense. It, you know, I don't know. It, Connor's got some weird shit going on right now. Talking about fighting fucking Diego in the cage. Fight, talking about boxing Floyd or uh, uh, Manny Pacquiao. What you know? What the fuck are you talking about, Connor? Get in there and fight. Tony Ferguson or Dustin Poirier, for fuck's sake, you know, go fucking fight Hazmat Shiminov at, at 70. Go get, jump in there and get a fucking fight that we're all yeah. going to be super fucking excited about and stop with this fucking goofy shit, man. I'm with you. Well, we have peaked over an hour, Fred. So next week, just remind me, let's get back in. We're we'll going to go, go 55 and down for men. And okay. Kind of be a lot, gonna be a lot of must see at lightweight. I think so. So, and we're just kind of compiling a list. I like this. Uh, dude, I don't think we got any responses to get on Twitter. Uh, it takes a second, man. Hopefully, as people listen to this, they'll fucking look Actually out for respond. it. You know what yes, I mean? yes, yes, um, But, yeah. Uh, start tuning into this on the Twitter if you listen to this. Check us out on Twitter if you don't already. And, uh, and participate in that. And we can start making this a thing. And I can also post something before the show start as well. Uh, all right, that's it. Uh, we will see you guys next week. Make sure you listen to the rest of the shows on the podcast or on the network, I should say. And uh, peace out. <laughs>